Okay. Thanks for coming to the Brown Bag. Today we're going to talk about managing email. We'll talk a bit about how to deal with just general Google Gmail issues. We're going to talk a bit about how to, how to organize your inbox, how to use filters, how to use labels. Uh, talk about some of the tools that are available in the Google Lab mod, um, features, mm -hmm. some which are good, some which are, yeah, but you can turn them on and off. Talk briefly about mobile use, accessing mail over mobile, because again, it is a little different for mobile devices. Um, we'll touch on Inbox Zero, which is a sort of this utopian concept, I think, <laughs> um, which, you know, the only way I've ever gotten there is I just move everything out of my inbox, and it's like, well, I feel good for about five minutes, but it doesn't really work for me, but we'll, we'll hit on that briefly. So just to open, to go to mail, I generally use Chrome because it is Gmail, and they won that one. So, now again, uh, one quick shortcut is you do not need to go to the portal and go to the little icon and all that. You just type mail.ncf.edu, which does save you a little time, and I happen to have been logged in recently, so it still remembered that, but if it's not, then it just brings you to the splash page, you enter your new college credentials, but then it pulls you right into mail and you don't have to go to the portal. So, it is a shortcut without having to do that. Go into your mail, and when you're in your mail, a few things. One is you'll notice that um, you can have different layouts for how your inbox is organized. And I'm using one here which puts unread messages first and then everything else after. One of the annoying things about Gmail, at least online, at least at this moment, and it sounds like it's going to be changing soon at some point, is that you can't really, it's not a continuous scroll interface. It's sort of like an interface that got stuck about 10 years ago, it feels like at this point. Um, but apparently that will change at some point. And the mobile apps actually let you do that now. But I have it showing with unread mail first. You can actually change that. If you go to where it says inbox, you'll see a little reveal triangle. And there are various ones listed there. One says default, one says important first. They determine what important is. Um, starred and priority inbox. So if I go to default, which is sort of how it will often show up, the true default puts these additional tabs at the top of the screen. And some people like them, some don't. It, Gmail auto-classifies mail into these categories. And if you drag something out of a category, it will remember that going forward so that mail that looks like that's not going to get put back into that category oh, again. Oh, you can drag them out? Yeah, oh. you can just say, you know, that really didn't belong there, and I just want to put that back okay. over there. Actually, in that case, it probably that's does belong there. Um, but, yeah, say this one here, I want to put there. And it will remember that that conversation shouldn't be in there. I'm not a huge fan of these tabs. I actually had a student come in yesterday who was concerned, and this is sort of a classic, this is a great new college thing, which is that um, we had a student who had set up a filter, we'll talk about those in a few minutes, to filter mail out of the forum. It, it, from the forum out of their inbox, so if, you know, when you know, these conversations sort of you know, go wild, they don't have to see them all. And yet she said all that her mail was going into, other mail was going into this thing called forum. And I was looking at it, we're looking at the filter, and the filter looks perfectly fine. It's, she has it actually right, it's just the email address of the, filter, of the forum. It's perfect. But what happens is it's still not working. And then I looked here and I said, ah, here it's called forums. She actually had it spelled slightly different on the filter. And I realized that this was one of the auto tabs that Google sets up called forums. Used to, I think, be called, it might have even been called mailing lists or something like that before. But it was putting basically anything that looked like it came from sort of a mailing list into this category. And it sort of defined anything that went to like a lot of people. So there was mail from like um, career services that was getting put in there. Anything like all, all NCF stuff was getting put into that category. So she liked using the tabs. So what I did was I, you can actually come in and when you look at where it says default, you'll see it says manage your inbox settings, you can get over there, and you can turn, that, sorry, where was that? Can you yeah, yep, so let me take you back, so you go inbox, and yeah. there's a couple of ways to get to it, but if you click on the little reveal triangle, mm -hmm. and if you click on where it says, show, you'll see it says manage your inbox settings, there's an easier way to get to this, oh, and I'll show you that, mm -hmm. and then, it then says which tabs do you want to enable, so you can turn off those tabs, so if that tab's not enabled, all that mail's yeah. going to go back into prime, it will be shown under primary. Again, some people like this sort of thing, so it puts things from like, you know, 
how it decides what's what. I mean, he has, has Twitter stuff under social. I mean, and one of the issues I've had is that once it started putting things into folders, it started yeah. sticking stuff into spam. Yeah, so. And after a while, it would just default it to spam. So here's my view on this. I don't use this approach. So if you want to use the default layout, you can actually come here, and the default layout just sort of mixes and matches all your mail together. You can turn off all these filt all these folders, mm -hmm. just have primary on. And then it's sort of how your mail always has looked, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can bypass those. So you can bypass those. Now that said, there's also important first. Google determines what's important. Now, again, there are, it, and it, they explain how they do it. Basically, if it's addressed to you as opposed to, you know, your CC or, you know, part of a mailing list sort of stuff, it'll put those higher on the list. And you can see these important ones because they have the little uh, triangle next to them. Um, actually, no, no, they have, they have a little, no, actually, when you do this view, they do not show you the little triangle. Uh, everything else, I have nothing apparently that's important. Oh, no, here we go. Important. Okay. Here it actually just is put so important. And again, this is basically things. And, and again, how it decides, because this one clearly didn't just go to me. Um, so, again, another feature I don't use. Important. So I've actually decided, okay, the one thing it's actually pretty good at figuring out is unread. <laughs> so I put unread first. What's nice about that is, again, if you do sort of go through your mail and sort of read this one, don't read that one, they don't sort of fall off the bottom unread. You can keep those more at the top of the list. Again, I think it will only show you up to 50 or so. Yes, and then they go into other pages. And this is other pages, yes, as some people have found. But un keeping it in this unread mode is kind of nice because, again, you can see what you read and what you didn't read and what you've sort of recently read. And then after that, it's, it's strictly in, in timestamp order. But if you've got, like, 7,000 unread, then you yeah. find them like in several pages down the road. They, they but if you do the unread that way, yes, it'll it'll keep all those together in the front and then the, all the unread after. And again, you can go in and out of these modes, so yeah, while you're sort of cleaning like, it up, working on it, right. you know. So, so if I'm in the unread category and I got like said 70,000 of these, how would I, can I say, take me to everything else, like things that I've read? Yeah, you can actually, I think, get down to the everything else tab. Somehow, well, I, think it's only, I have, I have a thousand, so it's not the same. Yeah. But when <laughs> Close I scroll enough. down, <laughs> yeah. When I scroll down, it only. I think it's oh, only shows you. Show it's you only going to show you fifty, and then I everything see, else then is still there. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So this is one way to sort of keep you a little bit more organized. So it will only right. show you up to fifty. I could have left fifty messages unread to demonstrate this, but I'm, it's okay. I'm not good it's at that. I'm, I don't like that little dot. It just bothers me. But, um, especially on my phone. But in that said, this, this organization I think actually works pretty well because it does keep yeah. them reasonably separated. And if you do want to, by the way, suddenly just mark a lot of things as red, if you start selecting things, at some point it will actually give you the option to say, hey, do you want to get everything that looks like this? And you say, yeah. Or you can create a filter to grab everything that's unread and mark it as red. Because at some point, I mean, if it's if you have you know a message that's six months old and unread, you're probably not all that <laughs> useful anymore. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's where you might want to use a different approach, oh, and we'll okay. talk about that. So again, so that's layout. Um, there's another one which is starred first. If anyone uses the star the stars here, which are the little second column over here, you can star an email. So here, Rini, you set that one. If I want to say, hey, I got to get back to that one. Or, you know, it's something that you know you're going to have to respond to. I know that it's, it's action required. It's, it's a good, uh -huh. but, but it's something you have to use sparingly, because otherwise everything just gets marked yeah. as star. Right. So you sort of have to be sparing about how you use that, and also remember to uncheck things once you um, are done yeah, with them, because so otherwise you now just have this other thing called starred, um, which does show up on the list side here. Is there a better way to say some things I need to respond to? Something? Yeah, you can create a filter, and we'll talk about that. Okay, and and let's let's and we'll get to those next. And okay. I think that's but you can use this start approach. Again, I don't use it. Right. And then there's something called priority, which combines unread, important, and start inboxes. Uh, God, I have no idea how that works. Wait, say that again. Priority, important, and unread are in the front here. Then uh, start stuff shows, and then everything else. Same. 
drop down where you picked the other ones. There's one called priority. Yeah, I'm not sure it's buying me enough. Um, so I'll just go to my unread first, where I tend to keep how I tend to organize my mail. How come the emails that I sent you aren't at the top of priority? <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. I read yours. So? See, I read should, yours. Still, He's already acted on them. I've acted. Yeah. It's right there. So I, come in. I see that is still a priority. It, it is. And I didn't star it. And, and I should have. And I will now. There we go. Um, so now it's starred. And by the way, you can use different types of stars. So, and I'll show you. You, you can have a different. Yeah. Um, but those actually don't really sort differently. And if you're on a mobile device, those stars don't actually work. So I like how when you click on the star, start. it stops being a star. It turns into a square. So a check, check. A check. Order. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the interface has something to be desired. So that, that's sort of the layout, the way to deal with layout. Next thing I want to talk about was a bit about, and there's some labs, and so we'll look at the labs in a minute, but I don't want to confuse things, so we'll stick with the standard stuff first. So filtering and labeling. So you'll see here, for example, here's a message that I've read that already has this little fil la label on front of it. Okay. So Gmail is different than pretty much any other mail system. You can create what, what look like folders, but they're not really folders. They are called labels. And what a label is, is it's just that. It's a tag, like a, just some sort of meta tag that like you can put on blog posts and things like that. It's just a tag that you assign to that message. And you can actually have multiple tags on the same message, multiple labels on the same message. So I have one here that says Library Brian and Library Caroline. They're both, a, and I have a filter which automatically assign them in that case. So things could be in different have multiple labels on it. What's the advantage of that? I can find it in different ways. I can search by that tag. I can, these tags look, create what look like folders on the left hand side column here, but they're really not. But I can, if I just go to that one called brown bag, for example, it shows me anything that has this brown bag label attached to it. And I'll show you how we attach this. So I can search them there, but some of these messages might show there, but some of them might show in more than one place. It might show there and it might show, again, like that one said, Library Brian, Library Caroline on it. It's actually in my inbox. That's actually a label in itself. It's in my, you can see actually here, you'll see some in labels that say inbox on them. Um, it's, um, it's in my, it's in a folder called, a folder, um, for lack of a better term, called Brian. Um, and it's in one called, in a folder called Caroline. And I, I find in all those places, there's still only one copy of the message. It's not that it hasn't duplicated it. It still only has one copy. It just has multiple labels. And you can add and change and remove labels. From, from so in library, you, you have whatever folders you're talking about. Yep. There is a Brian and a Caroline. Yep, so right here I have a folder called library, and then underneath that I have other I folders see. underneath okay. that. Okay. I have subfolders in that. And I can even do subfolders in there. Okay. So you could do this, say, with students, and have students by class or a class, and then, you know, however you want to do it. Um, so you can create these different folders and different labels, and um, you can manually move something from one place to another. So um, I have an email here, um, iTunes U. I want to, I can, I have a label, I click on here, up at the top of the screen here where there's that little label icon. And I can say I want to move it to a particular, or create, or add a label, because again, it's not moving, it's only adding in this case. So for now, I'll just put it in, I don't know, um, I have one called Apple iTunes U, um, and I'll apply that. Okay. I haven't taken it out of my inbox, you'll see right here, it says it's in the inbox, and it's iTunes U. If I want to take it out of my inbox, which is basically the equivalent of sort of archiving it, if I just click the little X there, it's out of my inbox now. It'll take it out of the inbox. I'm not going to do that right away. So it's still in my inbox, it, but now it has this iTunes U label on it as well. Now, I manually assigned that one there. And when I selected that message, I could have actually just moved it to that folder instead. And that would have done the equivalent of, of assigning a label and removing it from the inbox at the same time. I see. So that's the difference between labels and folders? Yeah, there really isn't one, in a sense. They are the same thing. It's just it's taking it out of the inbox. But, again, all the inboxes, in a sense, is a label as well. So it, they're all still there. They're all still there. And where they actually are is in this folder here, and you'll see it on the side bar there, called All Mail. 
everything is always in all now. If, if you're looking for something and you can't remember where it is, chronological it's in chronological order in all mail. And this is not just incoming, it's also outgoing mail. Which is actually kind of nice, because you can sort of find stuff. Uh -huh. It does make it a little bit easier. But everything is always there. And the only thing that makes it in all mail versus being in the inbox is that it doesn't have the inbox label on it. So if I take this message from, let's go back to the inbox, take this iTunes U one, which came in 1113, so it'll be easy enough for me to find it and I remove the inbox tag, or if I'd hit the archive button, it would have done the same thing, because it, it, all it does is when you hit archives, it removes the, the um, inbox if label. If you don't have another label, it goes into something. Just general, it's just in this generic thing called, uh, call, if there's nothing called archive, it just shows up in all mail. There is no folder or label called archive. Okay? But if I come here, here's that iTunes U one now, it just has that iTunes U label. Now if I want, I can select this message. It says move to inbox. I, and if I do that, all it does is puts the inbox label back on it, and it's back in my <coughs> inbox. It's not really moving because it's still keeping the other. Yep. As well. Again, there's no actual move. Right. right? And now it's under the red because I've actually read it now. There right? are casters inside that thing running around with baskets <laughs> full of men now moving. They're in Palo Alto. <laughs> the hamsters are in so Palo they're Alto. Up. Right. They're, st they're just getting up. Um, so, so that's, yeah, so labels, again, just think of it as just a way to tag a message. And, again, if you can't find something, all mail. Right. So, yeah, so I have a message here, smart technologies. I look at it and I say, you know, I'm just going to archive that. If I archive it, because I haven't assigned any other labels to it, the only place I'll find it now is in all mail. Yeah. And there it or is. Or you can search for it, too. Or I can search for it, because I can search for anything, and it actually looks across everything. So archive, like miscellaneous, you don't want to put a label on it? You, just kind of you can't, you know, for stuff you don't really care about, you can just archive it and get out of there. Or, you know, you could just leave it in your inbox. It's just marked as red. Mm -hmm. There's not much difference between archive and archive. There's really archive. not. Um, it actually becomes more of an issue if you're w trying to look up mail on something like a tablet or a phone. Mm -hmm. That's where it actually becomes more into play because the applications on tablets and phones tend to treat those labels much more like actual folders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In which case, then it matters more. But otherwise, yeah, you can just leave it in your inbox. It doesn't matter. You can have, I don't know how many messages. Apparently, I have one, of one to a hundred of many messages in my inbox. It stops counting, it stops counting after a hundred, actually. Right. Um, if I hit that, actually, I think it will tell me. I have, no, it just tells me I have a lot. Um, and you can actually look at oldest messages here as well. But okay. So that's just basically a basic assigning of labels. And again, you can have multiples. Now, I did that one manually. You can also create what are called filters. And what filters do is they let you do a bunch of things. They let you look at a message as it's coming in or going out, which is kind of nice about filters because you can filter outgoing now as well. And you can, you can do various things with them. You can assign labels. You can mark them as read automatically. You can delete them because, you know, this is basically something that you know is effectively spam but you haven't been able to get rid of. You could have it delete it. Um, you can have it, um, I, I, part of a couple of mailing lists where I don't really ever want to look at the mailing list unless there's some particular thing I'm searching for. So I don't really care about the day-in, day-out conversation going on. But I might want to be able to search at some point, so what I do is I'm, I'm subscribed to the mailing list, but I have a filter, and what the filter does is it automatically, when the message comes in, it apply, it says, mark, move it out of my inbox, so it marks it as read, assigns a label to it, and therefore I never actually see it. Occasionally I'll hear some device ding, and then it confuses me, but, but usually it doesn't. So how do you create these filters? So let me look here and see what filter I might want to create. Okay. So say I want to create a filter on Oracle Corporation. I get emails from them occasionally. Um, I look at this message and say, it's from Oracle, replies at Oracle. So how do I do this? Under More, I can say, filter messages like these. This is the easiest way to create a filter. You can do it completely manually, but this is sort of the easiest way to do it. And what's going to do is going to bring up a dialog box, and it's going to say filter from, and it, it in this case it automatically popped in the email address, but you can type in whatever email addresses you want there, to the subject, 
So you could do these on you can do this on from to and this is anding by the way it's not oring. No, it's or, uh, it's oring. Yeah, has the word doesn't it? No, it's anding. It's anding. Yes, we can test that, but um, I believe it's and it's an and condition. Yeah, you don't want to fill in too many. Okay. Um, from this to the... No. I'll check. I and I will get back to you. I think it is an and. It must have all those. It makes it less likely. It has these words, yes. Yeah, it's an and. Okay. You can say it has attachments, doesn't, don't include chats. You can say sizes are greater than certain things. And you can have multiple filters. The easiest way to deal with a confusing thing is have multiple filters, and they'll all apply. You know, it could be the subject, this and that. Um, so I want to say I want to create a filter like that. And then it gives me some options of what do I want to do when I filter that. I can say I want to skip the, arc, the inbox. I want to mark it as red, because I can skip the inbox without marking it as red. It still actually looks as red, as unread. And if you look in your email, it'll be dark. It'll be bolded. But I'd rather have it marked as red. I'll leave it that way. I'll mark it as red. I can start if it's something important. Okay. And I can apply a label. Um, I don't have a label called Oracle, so I'm going to say create a new label called Oracle. I can just have it at the top level, or I can say I want to put this under something else. I probably have one called Vendors, as I'm guessing. You could actually hit the number, the letter. Maybe I have one called Vendors. ETS Vendors, there we go, fine. Close enough, right? And I create that. So it's going to create that's going to so now it's going to put it into a folder called vendors called Oracle and that's located down that stretch. I could auto forward a message. So if I get particular messages that I always want to forward to someone, maybe an admin type person or something like that, that they need to get, I can say forwarding it and add the address. I can delete it. Um, never send it to spam, because maybe there's some messages that you're getting that are are being sent to spam that you don't want sent to spam. This is a way to force things never to be sent to spam. Um, I've seen this useful where messages just look like, and actually I have one where I, I can do that. Um, mark it as important, never mark as important, and you can categorize it. This goes back to that first thing that we looked at with those tabs across the top. I don't use those, so I don't care. And you'll also see here it says, also apply filter to 33 other matching messages. So I have 33 other messages yeah, in my in... There right? And when I did that search, it, it sort of found them, right? And I can say, sure, do that. And I'll say, create the filter. Okay. So if we go back to my inbox, the message from Oracle is no longer showing here because I said move it out of the inbox. Okay. If I go now to ETS vendors, Oracle, here are all the messages for them. If I looked at all mail, You'll see this one from Oracle, right here, and you'll see it now has this label on it called ETS, called Oracle Vendors. Okay. You pay when you create one of these filters to take a quick look at the category and just make sure that something odd didn't happen. And, yes, and I do that, and the first thing I do is, is once I've created one of these, I would go in here, look at Oracle, say, hmm, are these, you know, is there something else where somehow it came from them? Now, in this case... And again, what's really important when creating filters, and if we go to the filters, and to get to all your filters, if you go to the settings on the far right-hand side, that little gear, under settings, you'll see across the top one thing that says filters. So here's all the filters that I have. I got a lot of filters that I've created. Um, and I can probably find the one called Oracle. Yeah, was it there? That's good. I thought it would do that. Okay. If I want here, it's telling me what it's going to do. I can hit edit. I can come back here and make changes. Okay. What's really important is how you're doing this search. And we've had this issue with students a lot with the forum, again, where they'll search for the word, has the words forum in it, or the subject forum. And what happens is Moodle, if you're using forums in Moodle, uses the word forum as part of the title or in, as part of the address or somewhere in there is the word forum. And what happens is I've had faculty come to me and say, students are telling me they're not getting emails that are as part of these discussion groups, these forums. And what it often is is that they've created a filter 
to filter out mail from the new college forum. And it's filtering out that mail too. So that you need to be careful how you create these and you do want to, as Allison said, you do want to go and check and make sure that when you create a filter that it is doing what you think it's doing and not, not more. And maybe you need to tweak it, add another word or something. And again, you can create multiple ones. So if you need to, you could have, I, I, don't, I can have multiple filters that apply that same label. So if I want to do from and to, I can do that. Um, it is or, by the way, because I, I actually have some filters here that do both. Because um, matches list, matches this. So here's one example where I do it like for, for a mailing list. Actually, mailing list I don't want anymore. Um, for a mailing list, here's a, here's a uh, from this organization. Again, it does this skip the inbox, mark as red, and it applies that label. I get messages from them all the time. January, and this is why I don't, and so here, today, yesterday, there are a dozen, you know, a dozen messages from them. I don't want to read these. At some point, I might want to go back and say, hey, oh, I'm looking, you know, want to know something about the email from Jedediah Rex. Hey, there you go. And again, it doesn't matter who it's from because it was sent to the list, right? Yeah. So again, it, it all comes down to what, how do you apply that filter? How do you, how do you set it up? How do you set it up? Okay. Um, the filter I have for the brown bag. So I have a filter for brown bags. I'll just time it this way, it'll be easier. Yep, technology brown bag. This one's a little different. This one filters on the subject technology brown bag. So whenever I create that email that I send out on Wednesday or Thursday, yeah, I always include the words technology brown bag as part of the topic. Now, the top, my, my, my um, title actually has more than that. So it, it's just, it, it's not all, an, an exact match. It's doing it on those words being in there. What that also means that when someone replies to that email, which people often do, I get those messages as well with that label assigned. So I can keep that whole conversation together. Um, so like, Ron, if you want to do something for in C, you can create a filter that title grabs anything where the word in, you know, that phrase in C shows up and have them all go there, and then you can find all those messages. But if those messages weren't really about the brown bag, if somebody just uses the opportunity to ask you They do. You, can, you can go in and just uncheck, unclick the little. So if I go to my brown bag folder here, here's all the messages for brown bag, and you'll see it actually does a search. When you click on one of these folders over here, what it's actually doing is it's doing it in that folder. So in brown bag, I'll get rid of that. So it's, it's basically all it's doing, label equals that. Um, this one clearly is not really one that's there. I can just come in here and I can remove the brown bag label. And it's not going to show or up there anymore. That exactly. It should have been someplace else. I can, like in a really sense, a move the conversation right. by saying, hey, I'll put a different label on. I can have a label called Irene because, say, we were having a conversation after this. Like, you know, I don't want it. And right. we're still just replying to this, this theme. And again, I could have multiple labels. So nothing's stopping me there. Um, so again, I can create a label which is basically finds all the mail that's unread. And then I can create a rule that says apply the mark that all this stuff as red and start clean in a sense. That's the part I never get to. Right. So, but you can. You can create one and, you know, basically get everything that's unread, mark it as red, start over in a sense. Um, and again, I can select at the top of the screen. Say, the easier way, to, by the way, to, to mark everything as red, you come to the top of the screen, you'll see where it says the little select icon there. Um, if I select everything, and I say, um, under more, mark as red, it will tell me how many messages it's going to do. And if I have multiple pages, it will actually say, do you want to apply this to everything else like this? And you say, yeah, sure, go for it. And it would apply it to everything, and it would mark everything as red. I'm not going to do that now because... Now, again, I have 57 messages that are, are, are apparently have some sort of... Actually, no, I have 57 because it's actually going to mark these as red as well. 
even though they've already been read. It doesn't really matter. But so I will get rid of that. And I or I can say all. And just get that one. So again, using the filters, it's very powerful. Again, you can create multiple types of filters. You can delete filters also. If I, you know, there's some filters here I don't really use anymore. Um, so if I go to settings filters, um, I probably don't have, I think they finally stopped sending me email. So I can delete this. If I delete the filter, it'll get rid of the rule. I can also delete labels as well. <coughs> So again, you saw where I created that label when I was creating the filter. Um, also under settings, you'll see something that says labels here. Here's all the labels I have. So they're the ones created by Google. <coughs> and then there are new ones, and you can come here and say create a new label. You can say if you want to show that label on the side or not. Show in IMAP, uh, this is useful if you have something like an iPhone or an iPad or something like that. Um, Showing an IMAP will have it show in the email program in there. Or if you're using Apple Mail, for example, you're on a Mac and you're using Apple Mail to manage your, um, your Gmail, your account, showing an IMAP has it show as a folder um, in, 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 in a mail program. Otherwise, that's, that's strictly used for basically mobile devices and programs where you're using it on a, a, a mail program that treats your mail as a folder, in a sense. What's called IMAP an IMAP mail program. Okay. So I can create and add things. If I want, I can delete things. Um, I have uh, messages from Jono. Jono doesn't mail me very much anymore, right? Occasionally. I can just hide it. Okay. I can also say show if, uh, if, if, there's, if there's unread messages in there. So if there's no unread messages, it won't show in that, in that list. Any new, one, Any new, a new one come in, it would make it show. So if I go to my iPad, which... Um, so I'm going to turn off that, turn on this, ask for the code, okay. get the right code, always good. Okay, okay. Um, on my iPad, I'm actually using the Gmail program for new college mail. I don't love it. Um, they're coming out with a new one. Apparently people like that one a lot better, um, but right now it's not available to um, people who are using Google Apps. It's only available to standard Google App um, um, users. Um, so here's, here's the Google program here. Um, unread. Sort of, why is it not showing me everything? Go to the right folder. Inbox. Here's my inbox. <coughs> I hadn't pulled everything down yet. Um, and again, I can search through things here. Here you can see I had started that email to Irene. You can see it there. Here's all my folders. So again, here's brown bag. So again, all these tools still work here, and I can apply labels and all that here. Now, if you're using Apple Mail, which is a different option. You can use the Apple Mail program. I don't have it turned on here, but let me just turn it back on. I have the account set up. I just don't have the mail turned on. I'll turn it back on, so I may now have a lot more messages. Um, here, again, I'm only going to see my inbox, and it looks just like an inbox on um, any other type of account. And again, that flag that I put in that email from Irene, now shows us a little flag here instead of a, a little star. Right? The other folders, though, if I go down to accounts, here's where all those other folders are. But it's only going to show these ones that I've said show in IMAP. So if I don't have this IMAP feature turned on, um, if I turn off something in there, like the one called classrooms, if I can find it again, Classrooms, classrooms, classrooms. If I say hide, don't show an IMAP. And I never remember if you have to save this one or not. Settings you don't have, some you do, some you don't. I go back, I come back in, of course a refresh. Let's see if it worked. Whoops. Turn that off. Um, go 
go back into Gmail here, and Classrooms is still there. Let's force it a refresh. After a few minutes, Classrooms will disappear. Trust me on that one. Okay. But again, you can, but you can turn on and off off those folders. So did Ace just go poof? Poofed. Ace is gone. Oh. The whole building is gone. Oh. Uh. A lot of people don't like it. Office. <laughs> Should just be working home more. Um, back to the computer. Oops. Back to the computer once I disconnect this one. We're back. Okay. Um, so that's filters and labels. Again, I can create new labels. I can remove labels. I can do all that good stuff. Um, a couple of other things while we're here is something called labs. And labs are experimental features. Basically, someone probably at Google has created this. It hasn't been officially adopted into the product. So it's here today. It could be gone tomorrow. Okay. Um, so some of these I use all the time. Others I'll show you um, how they work. Um, and it's going to put them in the order. First, it puts the ones that are enabled, then it shows you everything else available. So I use one called Quote Selected Text. The way that works is that if I just highlight a piece of text in a message that someone sends me, when I hit Reply, it's only going to put that piece of text in that reply. So instead of doing the whole 4,000 pages, it's just going to put that one paragraph. A lot of mail programs have this. This is a tool that adds it to here. It is useful. I like that one because, again, you, especially when you start getting the 70-second you know, reply with the attachments, it, it cleans it up a bit. Um, Unread messages. Uh, this just puts the number of unread messages up, up in the top next to where the little M is in the icon. Mm. It's just useful when I have this window in the back. I can sort of see, but it's, it's fairly you know, innocuous, so it, I keep it there. Um, uh, but a couple of the other ones, there's canned responses. So if you have a standard response, you know, you know to the student who sends the paper in late, you can have your standard response. You click the button, and it, it basically lets you automatically send that text out. Uh, I know the library uses that for certain features, canned responses. Um, you can set your own shortcuts. You can have maps preview. Um, mark as red button sticks a button so you can mark things as red without having to open them up or go find them on the list. But there are a couple that are more interesting. Preview pane, I'll turn this one on. And here you do have to go down to the bottom and save changes. Um, and what Preview Pane does, it actually gives you your mail sort of in a different layout. Mm. So I get my list of messages here now. I can still have the unread read. And let me mark this as unread so I can show you what that's. So I marked everything as read, apparently. Um, more mark as unread. Okay. So you'll still see the things that are unread. Oh, it marked it back. Um, but it should, it should have a unread stuff there. So if someone sent me an email, hint, um, it would show up there. Um, but, okay. And you'll see it show up there. But what you can do here is you can see these messages mm -hmm. sort of without having to go in and out, which is kind of nice. It's not like a lot of other programs. It's like, it's like a lot of mail like programs. That. And occasionally I've seen problems with some HTML stuff getting a little funky on formatting, so images and such. Generally, it works pretty well. It seems like they've actually made it more stable than it was when I last played with it. So, I, I kind of like this one. Um, it, it's just a easier way to sort of see, because you still get your sort of whole texty sort of thing going on there. It just keeps it all that way. Okay. I see. Yeah, it takes taking its time showing up on this part. And that's... Um I just forced it. There we go. Right. So here's the unread part. There's red part. So if I can see that. And I can still do my reply here. Yeah. And that's just one of these lab tools. Lab tools. It's on, it's, so it's under settings. And in mail, under settings, labs. So I now have that one turned on. Um, Wait, what was that one called again? It's called Preview Pane by Peter B. and Michael K. We'll give them some credit. Not that we know who they are. 
Um, there's another one, um, if you use Google Chat at all, or a lot, right now Google Chat's sort of stuck at the bottom of the column here, it's hard to find. There's one here called Right Side Chat. I've seen a lot of students using this one. Mm -hmm. um, save changes, and what it's going to do is it'll have my, and I'm using this along with the preview one, so now it's having the messages in the, the column on there, there, and here I can see everyone who's online if I want to do chatting. So, and again, partially depends on what size screen you're on, things like that are going to impact it. They work now, it might not work next week, but you know, they don't hurt to try them. And there's, there are a bunch of other ones. Uh, labs are available also in like Google Docs and Google Sites and various other places. So, any questions on that stuff? Yep. So a, a filter is just a way to automatically apply. So a, a, think of a filter as a, a mail rule. Which one do we apply first? Um, you can do either. Uh, you can apply a label without having a filter. Okay. So a label, is, they're independent. It's one of the things that you can do with a filter is apply a label. Okay. So filters are just ways to tag messages. Mm -hmm. I think you'd want a label first in most cases. Well, it depends on what you and want to do with the filter. filter. I mean, you could have a filter that would send everything to... Spam. Yeah. 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 Or just yeah. mark yeah. these as red. But right. in essence, that's because would... there is a filter. There is right. a label exactly. called spam. Or just, you know, or not. Or, or again, I just, I don't care. I, it's, I mark it as red. I don't care. It stays in my inbox, but I don't care. I don't yeah. want to see it. Like but that email from things. Oracle, I might say, you know, I don't need to grab a folder, a label for that. I don't really care. From a particular mailing list or right. a particular um, whatever, you're going to want to create a label first Correct. and then have the but you can oh, create you can it as part of creating the filter. Okay, you can yeah, create sure. it as part. So you can have a label without a filter. And, and I might have a label, because there are cert certain labels I have where I can't really have set up a filter for it, because I don't have a good rule for how the mail goes in there. Um, I might have a label. Uh, for a while, I know, I think it works now with Don, but when Mike was president, I couldn't create a label for him for some reason, because the mail came from, like, president's office or something, and it was not a real address. Mm -hmm. and, Things like that. So I had a label called um, "president," but no, f I had, but no filter for it, and I would just manually assign that label to that message. Now that was at a point where I was assigning lots of labels, and I was trying to be really good with them. I come and go on that. You know, I, I'm not using labels as much as I did well, if in you filters. Use filters a lot, you, use, you manually do the labels less. But again, you can set them up however you want. So, so again, a label is just is a tag on it. A filter is a rule. And one of the rules that you can apply as part of a filter is to, is to assign a label to that message. Or but again, labels. or multiple labels. But again, you might decide you don't want to assign a label. You just want to mark it as as red. You want to forward it off to someone else. Because, why not? Um, one last thing looking at mail is something called conversation mode. And people either love or hate conversation mode. And I'll show you conversation mode. Uh, I'll find one that's a conversation. So, Carrie Banner sent me this email. I'm not in conversation mode. You'll see it says re, and uh, it's just the message. If I go into conversation mode, again, to get in conversation mode, to go to settings, and what I'm going to do actually is first I'm going to, I'm going to turn off that um, three-column display just because it'll be a little bit easier to see this. So let me do that first. Just a little bit easier to see these things if I do that. So I have this email from Carrie here, right? Another RE, another issue. So we, we have a conversation going on. But if I click on this, I don't know the rest of them. I mean, I can go through and they're sort of there in the history. But if I want to see all the messages in a conversation, there's something called conversation mode. And if I go into settings again, under general, there's something called conversation view. And what it does is it groups all the emails together that are in the same topic. Some people really like, and you got to hit save at the bottom of the page here, or not. Yes, you do save changes. So now if I go back to this list here, there's this message from Carrie, but you'll also see that message. So you'll see them sort of grouped that way. There's that message, and they sort of cluster together now. There's that one, there's that one. There's pros and cons of them. Um, I find them useful on conversations that happen over time. 
they're not, I find them confusing on conversations where there's a lot of activity at once. Because I don't know which one of these I've read or not. So, and that's how you start. So, I turn them on, I turn them off, I go back and forth on it. But it is a feature you can turn on and off. Um, the, unfortunately, there's no toggle to do it. You have to basically go into, again, you have to go into settings. It's under general settings, and you turn conversation view mode off, on or off. While we're there, we, you can also do things like um, put your picture in. You can do things like you set your signature and do your vacation reminder, responder. What's nice about the vacation responder is you can set it the start date and end date, and they don't have to be. You can set it up now if you know you're going out in a month. It doesn't have to be right then. And you can tell it to only send people to like people at New College, not everyone who sends me an email. Type thing. That's sort of some basics on, on mail. Um, apparently I have to save that. Uh, inbox zero, just very briefly. So inbox zero is this concept that you don't want to have anything in your inbox, right? Silly. Yeah, it, it's a goal. Actually, the concept um, developed by someone named Merlin Mann. Merlin yeah. was actually a New College alum. Yeah. Um, and he actually it ties in with the David Allen getting things done type, oh. type stuff. So it's, it's all related, and David and, and Merlin know each other. Um, so Merlin's idea here is that when you inbox zero, basically you should only check your mail a few times a day at most, sort of on a schedule, not sort of keep it running. He actually says keep it running, but don't keep checking it. Um, and then when you get a message, you either delete it, because it's not important, delegate it, so forward it off to someone else to deal with, respond to it right away, right? Um, defer it. And the way you defer it is you put it into a folder or you assign a label to it called respond later or act on later um, or do something with it. You know, and doing something with it basically is it's something that's going to take just a couple of minutes to do. Just do it instead of waiting. And again, that's where you get in with the getting things done stuff. You know, you, it's a nice goal. It's noble. Um, I don't do it. But that, that label... And well, and the def whole idea of defer though is then you set aside a part of the day that you uh, do yeah. these. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have that's right. So the key is mark, but you've actually touched them. You try to touch them only yeah. once or twice yeah. at most, yeah. and then you're done with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the goal is you're being. You know, I think a lot of these things work well in the era of you know yeah. ten, twenty emails a day. They don't work yeah. when you get hundreds of yeah. them. Most on the other hand, what the other approach is, again, just mark them, read it, mark it as read, and because you can easily search through mail, yeah. you just search it and find it that way. So. That's email. Didn't work? You still not? You still not? Uh, yeah, sure. It'll last for half a day. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Any other topics? I have, well, I have a question for you, but I don't want to mm -hmm. That's okay. I will then end the recording.